Today, we're going to be taking a look at a new low-cost flight controller from SpeedyBee for wing users. A little while ago, we did a review of this, the SpeedyBee F405 wing, which was a fully featured flight controller for wing and plane users that cost under $40. Today, they have released a new version called the F405 Wing Mini, which takes pretty much most of the same features and capabilities as its bigger brother and puts it into a smaller, lighter platform. Not only, though, is it smaller and lighter, it is cheaper as well, coming in at under $37. Today, what I'm going to do is give you an overview of this new flight controller. I'm not going to be taking it for a flight in this video more than anything. This is sort of a product overview, and then at the end, I will share with you my thoughts. Now, just to be clear up front, SpeedyB did send me over these flight controllers for free. They have not, though, paid me to make this video. They've not seen this video before it's been published, and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so as I've said, this is the SpeedyBee F405 Wing Mini. It is a smaller version of their original F405 flight controller that I've got here. I do actually have an overview review of this flight controller on this channel. If you're interested in seeing that, there will be a link to that in the description. But what we have here is a new smaller version based on the same STM32 F405, but in a much smaller and lighter package. They say this new flight controller is coming Coming in at just 23 grams, including the USB extender board. Now, as you can see, there are three boards, but only two of these are actually the flight controller boards. This USB board is an external one, and the idea of this is you mount it elsewhere in your aircraft, but it does have some of the functionality on there. So, for instance, it's got the USB port, the buzzer, and there's some other stuff on the back, which we'll take a look at in a second. Now, as you can see, the main board on this is substantially smaller than the original main board on the F405. What you've got is that main flight controller board, which is this one here. If I flip it over, you can see there our STM32 F405. We've got an SD card. We've got our sensors, our gyros down there. And then we've got our pin header ports with pads and a connector there. If we flip it over to this side, you can see the other side of the headers. You've then got our analog OSD chip. There is a full analog OSD on this, as well as additional pin headers. This second board is all power. So what you can see on there that there's a number of becks. So you've got two there. You've got your really big, thick pads there. And if I flip it over, you can see the label in there for them. Power in your ESC there as well with two pads on each one. And then if I flip it that way, there's some label in there for a UART. Now, there is also included in the box, if I give it a shake, all of the accessories, and some of these include this here, which is the bottom and top plates for this flight controller. So this is the boards that contain the components, and then these are the plates that are used to also hold it together. They're just PCB plates, and we'll take a look at them in a minute. Also included is all the accessories. So we've got some wiring harnesses as well as a capacitor, the one they include is let's just have a look at the rating what is it it is a 470 uf cap rated up to 35 volts we've then got our additional wiring harnesses loads of wiring harnesses for pretty much any setup that you want we've then got our accessories for putting the flight stack together. Then you've got your headers that you're going to need to solder to your boards for your servos. You could, though, directly wire to this if you wanted to. You don't actually have to install the headers, but they are there available if you did. Then we've got this separate I.O. board. Now, this doesn't mount to the flight controller, as I've said. This has our USB-C port on it, our buzzer. There's a little switch here as well as a button over here. Not sure what they do. And then if we flip it over to this side, you can see there that there's an ESP32 connected to an antenna, which gives us our Wi-Fi connectivity, as well as some pin headers down there too. Now, the first thing you're going to obviously want to do is install the headers onto this before assembling the controller. Now, they include some right-handed headers with the kit as well as normal ones so you're going to want to choose which ones you want for your specific setup. Okay so the headers are installed so we're now okay to assemble the flight stack. Now they include all these little bits here in the kit. What we're going to need to do is figure out where they actually go. I haven't looked at this in advance so we're going to be flying by the seat of our pants on this one but it should be fairly straightforward. What we have is is the little pieces that go in between, which will be those ones there. We then have screws that go one side and then some smaller standoffs that go on the other. 
Now what's interesting is they actually give you two bottom plates for this stack. You have this full size bottom plate which covers the whole of the board and then you have this smaller plate that leaves the bottom of these headers available to access whether you wanted that for say hard wiring rather than pin wiring like I've got here. It also means that you could install the headers the opposite way around if you wanted to as well. Okay, so there's the assembly done. We've got the main flight stack. So we've got the bottom board, which basically is just a board that you can stick it down with. You've then got your flight controller with your IO, which we'll look at in a second. And then we've got the top board there with our battery input as well as our ESC. And then we've got this IO board, which is separate, which has the USB-C port on it, the buzzer, as well as the Wi-Fi function. And that's then connected on this harness, which means you're going to be able to bury this in your aircraft frame if you want to, and then mount this somewhere with easy access. Okay, now to walk around the I.O. Now, as I've shown already, we've got our battery and ESC pads. We've then got our servo outputs, which we'll talk about in a second, and a UART. If we flip it over, it does label a lot of what is on here. So, if we look here, first of all, this shows our headers down here. So, we've got our servo outputs, which is S1 to S9. Then, there's a dedicated S bus 1 on the side there, too. Above that, you can see there's a UART, which is ground, 4 volt 5, RX1 and TX1, and that is that pin header that we can see there. There is, if you look around the flight controller, headers located all the way. So this one on this side here is our external USB connector that goes to this board that I showed you there. This one on this side here is another telemetry port. This consists of ground, TX and RX2, TX and RX4, as well as a 4 volt 5 pin. That can be used for GPS and any other I.O. that you might have as well. On the bottom of the flight controller here, you can see we've got HD VTX connector. So that consists of voltage, ground, TX5, RX5, ground and S bus. Next to that, you've got your analog VTX and camera connectors for use with that onboard OSD chip. And then there are a number of other pads located around the controller. So for instance, if I move to this side here, there are some pads located down there that you can see. If we take a look at the manual, it tells us that these are our pads for a digital airspeed sensor. So there is an AR pad as well as a CL and DA. There is actually a dedicated GPS port on this flight controller as well, which is this one here. That consists of our SDA and SCL for our I2C and it has TX and RX3 on a UR as well as 4 volt 5. There are also pads located under this top plate. All of these are correctly labeled in the manual. So if you're interested in finding out what each of them do, SpeedyB do label them up nicely for you. Now, with regards to power, this does have BEX on board, but it is not the same as we had on the original one. There is a 5 volt 2 amp BEC and a 5 stroke 6 volt 4 amp BEC. They are designed to power the accessories as well as the servo ports. The camera output, the VTX output and the digital VTX output, which is these here, are all powered from main battery voltage. There is no 9 volt back or 12 volt back on this flight controller. And it is worth making sure that if you're going to use this, either with an analog camera VTX or digital, that it is capable of the battery voltage that you're supplying the flight controller because it is basically a direct pass through. Now, just walking you over the boring main specification. Both of these are based on the STM32F405 running at 168 MHz and have one megabyte of flash. They are both compatible with iNav and Ardrapilot. Both use the same gyro, which is the ICM 42688P. Both have micro SD card slots. Both have six UARTs, although UART 6 is dedicated to the SpeedyB wireless functionality. They both have the capability for a digital mag as well as a digital airspeed sensor. They both have four ADCs. So you've got voltage, current, analog, RSI, and the airspeed sensor. You've got 11 PWM headers on here plus an RGB on the original one, whereas this one has 12. So you have nine pin headers plus two on solder pads plus an LED pad. This one does have a current sensor built in capable of 215 amp, whereas this one is capable up to 150 amp max. This runs at 90 continuously. This runs at 80. 
As I've said, for the backs, this does have the same 5.2 volt back as well as the 5 stroke 6 volt back, although this one is limited to 2 amp and 4 amp, whereas this one is 2.4 and 5 amp. What this one doesn't have is a VTX and camera back. This one has one capable of 5, 9 or 12 volts up to 2 amp, whereas this doesn't have it at all. Camera and VTX is directly supplied from battery voltage. Whilst this one does have camera switching, this one does not, and they both do support onboard telemetry via the SpeedyB app, although this one has to do it via that USB board that I showed you earlier. The only other real difference between these two is this one does have that built-in battery indicator as well as the support for up to four LED strips, and this one doesn't have that functionality at all. Overall, what SpeedyB have done is try to retain as much of the main functionality as you can, but try to cram that into a much smaller platform, and actually, it's incredible what they have been able to do. With this flight controller, SpeedyB have put together a very comprehensive manual. If I just walk you down it, first of all, it shows you all of the main specifications. It gives you an overview of the standoffs and how to put the boards together. And if you keep going down, it then starts to show you all of the main components and all of the pads, both the external ones that I showed you, but all the internal pads as well. You can see the layout of them down there. It also shows you some of the jumpers that are available because as I mentioned earlier, there is no specific back for the VTX or camera on this, but you can force it to work off the 5 volt back if you wanted to. They've then got the layout for everything else there and even on that external USB board showing us the switch, which in the end was for the buzzer, as well as the flight controller boot button. If you keep going down, it then shows you some of the additional stuff. So the jumpers for the servo output, which you can set to 5 volt or 6 volt, as well as the jumper for the battery voltage output for that back VTX and camera. As I've said, you can either set it to 5 volt or you can set it to the main voltage input. They also have some nice layout diagrams that show you the best options for setup. So again, they show you the dual ESC outputs and then a layout diagram of a traditional setup for this flight controller. Another big feature of this flight controller and one you find on many of the other SpeedyB ones is the fact that it fully supports the SpeedyB app via the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth function. As I showed you earlier, it has that little antenna on that USB board and it is fully compatible with the SpeedyB app just like their previous controllers as well, allowing you to wirelessly configure this controller if you need to whilst out in the field via the SpeedyB app. Now, with regards to price, this new SpeedyB F405 Wing Mini is going to be available for $35.99. The original Wing was available for $39.99, and they've been able to deliver this new one for even cheaper. Frankly, that price is incredible, and SpeedyB are continuing to do an amazing job of giving us good, high-quality flight controllers at a lower price point than close to anyone else. They are right down in the kind of price area that you would expect to find things like the AT32 from our Terry, yet they're providing us an STM32 F405 based controller, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality for the SpeedyB app, and all of that I.O., which is just making this such a compelling option. When you compare the pricing on any of the SpeedyB controllers, as compared to others on the market, it is a night and day difference, especially in the wing world when you've got companies like Maytech charging dramatically more. Over the last few months, SpeedyB have done an incredible job of delivering high quality, low cost flight controllers, bringing down the barrier of entry to FPV. Now, if you're interested in getting one of these or any of the SpeedyB flight controllers, there will be a link in the description below. As I've said, this is going to be available for $35.99. I want to say a big thank you to SpeedyB for sending this one over. If you're interested in finding out more, the link will be there, which will take you to the SpeedyB website. If you have any questions for me on this flight controller, please do put them down below and I will try and answer them. And hopefully the information I've given you here today has been useful. And if it has, please also consider checking out the links to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without their support. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Any questions, put it below. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.